Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Farah and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing some code to find security vulnerabilities. We are going to be doing a line by line review of a challenge from codereviewlab.com. I've been using this website a lot to practice secure code reviews just on the go for fun. And I thought why not make a video where I explain exactly what I'm thinking while solving these challenges so you can see the trial and error phase before I successfully find the vulnerable line of code. And I think code reviews are such an important skill if you want to work at product security or application security roles at big tech companies or fan companies. Even at Meta, I see security engineers doing security reviews by reviewing code of a new feature that's about to go out or they take up a project that lasts a few months and from time to time they review code for a big feature that's already out there. I don't know how helpful this skill is for bug bounty, but if your goal is to work at one of these big tech companies or fan companies in AppSec or pro product security roles, then I think that you need this skill. Um, I'm going to make this a series and we are going to start the first video, which is this one with an easy challenge from codereviewlab.com. For this video, I picked the challenge called driverless cab booking app. So here we are supposed to review code for a new autonomous cab booking platform built with Django. The startup just launched their MVP allowing users to order driverless cabs to any address. The development team rushed to production to meet investor deadlines, examined the booking endpoints to ensure proper security controls are in place for state changing operations. And you can also see that this challenge involves a CSRF vulnerability. So that's already a pretty big hint out there. Let's start reviewing the lines of code in the first file. This is a Python file that defines all the parts in the app and we have three admin accounts and API. Moving on to the settings file, this looks like it has some configurations of the app like installed apps, uh, what middlewares there are and uh, I see a CSR of middleware there. There's details about the database. I don't want to go too deep into what apps and middlewares are installed here just because I think it makes more sense to Google it when I see it being used in the logic in the code just to see how the middleware being there changes the behavior of the app and what exactly it is doing there. Okay, so moving on to the next file models.py, we have a class called booking here which has all the status choices defined, pending, confirmed, completed, cancelled and user is defined as models.foreign key. Foreign key means it is a many to one relationship. In this context, it probably means that one user can be associated with multiple bookings, but a booking cannot be associated with multiple users. We have the pickup address, which is a character field with a maximum length of 255. Destination, which is also a character field. If status is a character field. It is going to be taken from one of the statuses that were defined earlier in the booking class. And we have created at, which is a date time field and estimated cost is a decimal field. All of this looks okay to me. So let's go on to the next file. Next file, we have urls.py. We have the URL book slash cab on the logic for this is defined in the views file in the function called book cab. And then we have bookings here. The logic is defined in the views file again with the function name list bookings. And lastly, we have cancel slash booking ID and the function for this is defined in views file with cancel booking function name. This one definitely looks interesting because this is the only one that has the booking ID in the URL. So it could potentially be canceling the booking just by a get request. Uh, maybe that's the vulnerability, but let's move on to the next file, the views file, so we can see what's actually going on in the logic. Okay, now we are on the views.py file and the first function is called book cab, which is supposed to be a post request. It takes two things from the request, the pickup address and the destination. If either of these are not in the request, then it throws an error uh, saying missing required fields 400. Uh, if they are there, then it creates a new booking object for the user uh, with the pickup address and the destination that was provided and sets the status of the booking to pending. It also returns a response with the booking ID, then it sets the status to confirmed and it returns a message saying cab booking successful. If the request method is not post, then it will throw an error saying invalid request method with a status of 405. 
Next, we have the function called list bookings. This filters on all the bookings by the user and orders them by time they were created. Then it grabs all the data like the booking ID, the pickup and destination, the status of the booking, and then it returns all of that data in a JSON response. I don't think the CSRF vulnerability could be here because when you're listing the bookings, this cannot be a valid CSRF scenario because the attacker will not be able to see the response. So I don't think the vulnerability is here. Lastly, we have the function called cancel booking, which takes an argument of the booking ID and uh, then it sets the status of that booking to cancelled and then saves that booking and returns a response with a message saying booking cancelled. If the booking doesn't exist, then it just returns a 404 error saying booking not found. Um, we saw earlier in the urls.py file that the booking ID for this one is in the URL. So I'm thinking maybe this is the vulnerable line. So let's try that. Okay, I'm wrong. This is not the vulnerable line. Uh, maybe it is where uh, the logic of the function is. So let's try here line 45. Maybe this is the one. Okay, I'm wrong again. Maybe it's the start of the function. Let me try this again. Mm, okay, it looks like I'm wrong again. So maybe there's something else going on here. So let's take a step back and see what else is going on in the file. Okay, let's see what they are importing here at the top because I got so excited to look at the logic of the functions that I completely forgot about what they are importing. I see they have a CSRF decorator here called CSRF exempt. I don't know what this means. So I'm just going to Google this whole line. And we have some Django documentation. So let's see what's going on. CSRF exempt view. This decorator marks a view as being exempt from the protection ensured by the middleware. Okay, this is super interesting. I would have not thought that this decorator is actually disabling all the CSRF protections in the entire file. Um, and actually when they are using this, this means that the whole file and all the booking functions are vulnerable to CSRF. Uh, so let's select the line where we are using the decorator and see if that's the vulnerable one. Ah, uh, yeah, and that's it. So you can see here the challenge is completed and uh, the developer explicitly disabled Django's built-in CSRF protection by using this. So all of the functions are vulnerable, even the booking cab one. Um, and we can read more about the explanation of why this is vulnerable. Uh, let's see what the mitigation for this is. It is just removing the CSRF exam decorator and properly implement Django's CSRF protection. And that's it. This was so interesting because I got all caught up in thinking that there will be some logic in the code that the developer made a mistake on. And turns out that it was just a simple Django decorator that was causing this bug. If I had just Googled that decorator before I even read the logic, I could have solved the challenge. Um, this taught me that it's so important to not overlook anything when reviewing code, even the small stuff. If you see a CSRF protector or middleware, you don't recognize it or you don't know exactly what it does, just a simple Google search and quick read of the documentation or maybe something even on Stack Overflow can give you the answer. And that's all I had for you in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like this video and subscribe for the next few videos that are coming in this series. So I'm going to see you in the next challenge video. Bye.